Joining me now are Jade Raymond and Patrice Desilet from the Assassin's Creed 2 team. What we did was we went to the community and asked them, what do you want to know about Assassin's Creed 2? And let's see what Jade and Patrice say. So first up is an appropriate question from BDog923 from the UK. Now, Assassin's 1 sold a zillion copies, but now what's going to happen? Will there be more missions, a wider variety in the structure and the storyline? I think I can jump in on this one. And in AC1, there was roughly between five and six different mission types. And this, this time around in Assassin's Creed 2, there'll be roughly 14, 15, 16 different mission types. And with that, we can construct, construct like bigger ones because we can start with a uh, escort mission and then that becomes a chase mission and we finish into an assassination mission and you put that together and creates a different uh, entirely mission. And we got rid of the entire structure of the first game where we had the investigation part and then you had the assassination parts. That's gone. Now the world is open with mission givers and people you meet and they will give you mission to go to. Uh, we roughly right now have around 200 different missions in the entire game. 100 for the main path, the main narrative, and 100 for the side quests and side missions. So I guess it's like totally different and way bigger than AC1. Yo Ya from France wants to know Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2, what's the link, and Desmond, Ezio, and Altair, how are they interrelated? Well, <laughs> this, is obvious, this is actually a really interesting question because um, we've made the link and really explain that whole backstory in the PSP game. So we're making a PSP game which continues Altair's adventures and in it you will understand, if you play that game, you'll understand the link that happens in Assassin's Creed 2 on the PS3, Xbox 360 and PC version. So there's of course Desmond Miles, like you said. Uh, he's the guy who's going to be there in every Assassin's Creed game and you're playing a different ancestor of his. Uh, this time, the ancestor is called Ezio, living during the Italian Renaissance. A different guy, but uh, some of the same traits. And you're going to find out some links between them in Assassin's Creed 2, but also the source of where Ezio comes from in the PSP game. Tell us about Ezio and how did you come up with the character? What's the background with him? Well, Ezio is a young Florentine, Florentine noble at first, so he's not an assassin. Something will happen to him and he will have to become one. He will have to learn to become an assassin. And he will meet some friends who will teach him how to become that master assassin that he will be at the end of the game. We wanted to have character progression this time around. In the first game, starting with a master assassin, it was tougher for us to, to make a story about someone who's learning and then teaching the player. So we wanted a character that is as, like, he has as, as many knowledge of being an assassin as the player. When you pick up an Assassin's Creed game, you want to become an assassin. So we say the main character has to be in the same emotional state as the player. So both of them, player and main character, are not assassin. They will learn, and that's why we picked up Ezio. But Ezio is also, maybe you want to jump in, but Ezio is also someone who's like, he has more panache than Altair. He's like, he's someone who likes to be around women, just like oh, so presently small, I am. Ladies man, like you, he must be modeled after you. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't have this beautiful <laughs> beard. <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing, of course, that we kept consistent, um, Ezio is a really cool name, I think. It's yeah. got a, kind of got that edginess. Like, like I almost Ezio. like, yeah, Ezio, you could be like, but um, it also means bird of prey, eagle, kind of, it continues the whole yeah. thing. So Altair was bird of prey in Arabic, and now Ezio is the same meaning in Italian. So when the team found that name, we were like, that's it, that's it. <laughs> perfect. It's a cool name and it follows in the line. So there's, a lot of new to the character, but we also kept a lot of the great stuff about Altair that worked. You know, we're not going to change everything that worked. Now, I'm going to skip around a bit because this is something I wanted to know, but also Benjamin94 from Germany, he wants to know, in the first one, Altair was missing a finger and it was kind of like the leap of faith, right? But Ezio has all 10 digits. Why? Well, Ezio has 10 fingers for a because of one man, Leonardo da Vinci. So Leonardo is the one doing the weapons for Ezio. And he finds a way to do a hidden blade without cutting any fingers. So that's the reason why you have 10 fingers. And that will be part of the game. You'll live that experience. You'll live that moment of Ezio's life. 
So that's it. I mean, it's like as simple as that. Like when you have the best, you know, most intelligent man on earth, and he can do a hidden blade without cutting any Plus, finger. What would we have done with Assassin's Creed 10? He would yeah. have had no fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be an assassin with no fingers? Well, I can climb. I can climb. 15th century Italy is where it's at to be an assassin. You get all 10 fingers, you get to keep them.